All right, so hey, listen, I'm going to talk briefly and then uh, leave it up for you guys for answer, uh, question and answer. Um, I think what I'm going to I'm going to start talking with is, is more about my journey in high school. So, just so you know, you know, people think I was shooting hezies in the bathtub, and 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 that all I've done in my life was water polo, but that was never the case. My grandfather was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates. I wanted to play baseball. That was what I wanted to do. And um, I got the opportunity at a 14 years old by Manuel Estiardi, the six time Olympian, um, and watching the gold medal game of Spain. And after, after the game, him patting me on the head and saying, maybe you'll be like me one day, changed my life. Okay, so again, 14 years old, I played multiple sports until I was 12 years old, then I started just playing water polo at my 7th and 8th grade, and then freshman year in high school is when my life changed. And I told, I told it before the camp, I went up to my father and I said, Dad, I want to be an Olympian. I want to go to the next Olympic Games. And I, and I told you what he said, I love you son, but you're short, you're fat, and you're really slow in swimming. So you got to really be dedicated to, to this and as well as, you know, you talk to me about your goal or your dream school with Stanford, well you have to have perfect grades. So how are we going to manage all this? So one of the biggest moments for you as parents and, 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 and the coaches that you have is I pulled my coach, my father down, and Ken Schroeder over there. And I said, we made a plan. And I set the goal. What do you think my top goal was? Win a gold medal. Gold medal. Right? Make an Olympic team. But a lot of times we set these goals. I want to be a doctor. I want to be, you know, a LeBron James. And that's great. You should dream as big as you can. But to get there, you have to set little goals. Because otherwise, a week will pass and, oh, yeah, it's all right. I'm going to work hard next weekend. One of the biggest things I did is I sat down on a notebook that I still have on this weird, on this printer piece of paper. You know how you had all the lines back in the day? Yeah. That paper, and I wrote, first goal was breaking a minute in the 100 freestyle. Second goal, joining a swim team, right? I just wanted to join it and join it every day. Third goal was making my varsity team in high school. So I set all these goals, you know, fourth goal, finish, finish with straight A's. And I, and, I, and I set all these little goals and it just helped me stay on that path, right? So freshman year, after the high school season, I would wake up every day before practice at 5.30 and I would go to the gym with Kenny and I lifted six days a week, right? We worked a lot more on, on, uh, on being fit and not heavy weights. I took out for nutrition. I stopped eat, drinking any kind of Coca-Cola, any kind of sugary soda, and I stopped eating fast food, which back in the day was hard, because even my dad's favorite was Del Taco, and no fast food, right? Sweets, I was never a guy that loved sweets, but when I, and I had it sometimes, but I tried to limit it. And as far as nutrition-wise, I just tried to eat real food, right? And, and I had cheat days, don't worry. I, I wasn't a crazy uh, maniac in, in, when nutrition came, but I definitely didn't eat something that had 55 ingredients on it, right? I would actually read ingredients in fruit and vegetables and, and proteins and pastas and salads or something I incorporated. So I would lift in the morning, I would go to high school. Immediately after high school, I'd have water polo practice or swim practice. And then immediately after, I would dedicate about an hour or two hours, whatever it was, to study, okay? Because I knew that if I wanted to continue this and go to that a double water polo practice or swim and still play a club or have a whole weekend of tournaments that if I didn't study, then all of a sudden the day before my game, I was gonna have to give up one, right? So if I had an exam, and this is hard, 
This was the hardest part for me on the education side. If I had an exam, a final in two weeks, you think uh, I waited the night before? No way, because the night before there was probably a good club practice that I could be a part of, right? So I made sure I said, hey, every day I'm gonna study a little bit for that final, a little here during that hour, hour and a half, a little here, a little here. And then um, when that final came, I studied a little more the day before and then I, I, I succeeded on those finals. So again, that was my career, early in the morning. I'm gonna talk about managing time. And that's an issue you guys have because we didn't have these little phones that have all this magical stuff on it that you can see what everyone's doing all over the place. Right, we had we had Nintendo, I played, uh, what is it? Pac-Man. Pac, no, that was your era, Pac-Man. Whoa, whoa, don't go there, son. I still use the tic-tac-toe. No, it was Mario Pong, Kart. it was Pong. Pong, Mario Kart, But, it, it, look, TV was also something new, so it, there were still a lot, of, a lot of distractions. Look, I'm in high school, right? Long Beach, tons of parties and things to do. But the fact that I had everything written down and knew what I needed to do, I knew the time that I could have free. I knew there was a weekend, oh, that weekend I'm good because I studied, I worked my butt off, that weekend I'm gonna take off and I'm gonna do something with my family or friends. I knew at night, hey, if I finish this and during my recess or some off time, I got my homework done, then tonight, you know what, I can, I can just sit on the couch and watch TV or go watch a movie with my friends on a Friday night because guess what, I finished my study, I did that, I swam hard, I lifted in the morning, I was gonna be, I was, I was, I, I was able to do that. Because I think that's the biggest thing that we get lost in is our time. We said, how do you have time to lift and swim and go to school? There's time. It's just how much time, if you think about it, are you wasting on the phone, chilling, talking to friends, when you could just be getting done what you ultimately believe in and care about and then have a free mind when you're ready, when you're with your friends and, and, and you, and you want to go. So again, so freshman year, I accomplished my goal. Sophomore year, same thing, 5.30 in the morning. And, and one of the first things that Kenny told me was like, hey, look, on these days that you're training late, you got to sleep, man. You got to get seven to eight hours minimum. And again, where's the time, right? Staying up till 10, 11 at night. So I made sure that everything I was doing and I was coming home, I was getting that seven to eight hours. Still to this day, even with that little crazy one that wakes up at three, I figure out a way to get seven to eight because otherwise I don't feel the same. And I can't tell you how many, how many athletes your age that we've seen that their nutrition is down, they don't time manage, so they don't get enough sleep. And what do you think the first thing that happens when that all accumulates? Injury. Injury. That's your body telling you, stop. You're, you're killing me. Seven to eight hours, right? So again, up every morning, six days a week, setting my little goals, sophomore years, get it down to a 52. Um, uh, I was 150 pounds. My, our goal before the Olympics was 190, right? That year goes by. But here's something else that's important, and this is on the water polo aspect, is I finished the season my freshman year, okay? The first person that I, I asked a question to was who? I mean, like, luckily he's my dad, but who? My coach. The coach that's coached you for three months. And I go up to the coach and I say, what do you think I, I need to work on? So again, I'm, I'm doing all the things I know I need to work on, but water pole wise, what is it? And the first thing the coach said to me was, I am small and I was not fast. So what, what were people doing to me? They were taking me in the set. I couldn't guard. So now water pole wise thinking, when I came to my club practice, that is all bull crap. It's just practice for you to get better for yourself and for your team and for your future. Instead of just going through the motions of club practice, what do you think I did? I said, coach, I'd like to guard. 
Tony, you're a terrible guard. I know. I know. But I'm going to guard. I need to learn. So I guarded. Every practice. Ryan Bailey. Adam Wright was a center. I got hooped. But you know what happened after a year of guarding? I figured out how to guard. So now I go into my sophomore year. They post me up. I shut them down. I take off on a counterattack. Juden, so after sophomore year, same thing. I was great quick shooting, lobs, all of this. I wasn't a great outside shooter. What do you think I spent all off season doing? Outside shooting? So two and a half years. I finished junior year. I show up to, to a camp and I get invited by the national team to be a part of that at 17 years old. I am now going a 48 in the 100 freestyle. I'm now 185 pounds. I have straight A's, and I'm a pretty all-around player. A year later, I get a full ride to Stanford, and I go to my first Olympic Games as still the youngest men's player ever to play in the Olympics. So, the reason I tell that, because all of you, and my dad says it's great, there's greatness in all of you. It's just how do we get it out of you? It's easy to just say, yeah, I'm going to go to Stanford too, or I'm going to be the best. It's hard, it's hard to be great. And not physically hard, yeah, we lifted hard. I, swimming, I hate swimming still to this day, but it, 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 yeah, I had to do it. I knew I had, needed to do it. But the, the, the thing that I never could live with is regrets. I could never look back and, and lose a game or not get into Stanford. If I didn't get into Stanford or not make the Olympic team, I would have still been proud because, man, I did more than everyone. And I know I would have been successful at another place and maybe made the next Olympic team or in another facet of my life. But what I didn't want and what you guys don't want, especially you younger ones, is regrets. You definitely don't want to be a senior in high school going, man, probably could have worked harder. Probably could have studied a little more. Probably should have slept more. Now I've been injured for two years and probably never get to play the sport I love. That's what you don't want. I went on to my career, five Olympics. I played professionally in Milan for five years, in Croatia for four years, three years, Montenegro two years, Brazil. And out of all those, those lists of things, I, I didn't accomplish one thing. What was that? The gold medal. I didn't get it. But I tell everyone, it, it hurts. But there's no, there, there was not a practice, there was not a moment that I have a regret that I think we could have worked harder to win. My group, Meryl, myself, all of us did everything possible. And now, that's still my goal. But for you guys on the men's side, the women, you, you guys are just, just too good. <laughs> so that's why well, we're trying to... Beach water polo, you know, that's more important. That's, that's right. Time, man. I don't know. But these new rules, man. Uh, but, uh, and, th and that's why we're, we're so dedicated to this sport and, and to you kids, because we do see that there, if there is a possibility on the men's side. And uh, I see that happening. So, that being said, look, I, I, I know you learned a lot at this camp. I hope you had fun. But if there's anything you can take back, it's, it's a privilege to be an athlete. We, we were talking to the president of RECO. You have no idea. You have no idea what life is like once you, once you stop playing. This is the best time, man. When I was in high school and college and walking around, they're like, hey, that's that Tony guy. Everything was just about me getting fit, right? I still look good, <laughs> you know? Right, you, you got to take naps. Mom and dad were like, yeah, go ahead, take a nap. They were giving you nice food to make you all ready. <laughs> Right, giving you hugs. Your your family members would come from all over the place to see you play. 
right? And your grandma, who doesn't know anything, goes, man, you're so good. And you go, I know. <laughs> then you stop. Then mom and dad say, hey, take care of yourself. Get your own food. Parents don't come, family members don't come from home because there's no many games, no more games. Got to figure out a job. Got to figure out life. And when I was playing professional, we had practice from 10 to 12 and four to six. I didn't know what to do with my time. That was it, I got massages. We had games in Croatia where there's 5,000 people in the stands with fire, I'm on TV. Now I walk, no one knows my name anymore. <laughs> no, but, um, but really, I mean, it, 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 take advantage of this. And those of you who have aspirations in college, college is great too, that's what life is like, man. So if, if, if you want that life, if you want to live that life, first off, be proud of yourselves that you're already here and you can survive in the water for as long as you have. That's pretty cool. You play the toughest sport in the world. You play the sport that was the first team sport in the Olympic Games. And be proud that you're an athlete. And if you're an athlete, represent us well by trying your hardest. Look, you're going to fail. We all fail. Failure is in all of us. We're, we, you need to fail to get better. But it, 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 if you don't try, you won't fail. And if you don't fail, you'll never succeed. Right? So, anyway, thank you guys. Uh, if you have questions for me, go ahead. And then we'll start the tournament.